Got it. I'm gonna check my zipper. <laughs> Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Today's video, we have a very special project that I'll be working on for another YouTuber. We're gonna be building his logo on the CNC plasma table. So let's take a look at this project and talk about who it's for. Subscribe! For today's video, we are going to be working on the logo for Doug over at One Eye Customs YouTube channel. Now this logo is not just for his YouTube channel, this is a logo that I believe Doug has had for a while now. Now when Doug's not doing glamour photo shoots on large boulders out in the woods, you're gonna find him running some really nice equipment of his out on his property. He's got a beautiful piece of property in Pennsylvania. He has a ton of DIY tips, a bunch of great fabricating jobs, and just a bunch of great information about everyday tasks and ways to make them even easier to do. <sighs> God, I hate these parts. All right, so here is Doug's logo for One Eye Customs. You can see that he has the skull and crossbones set up, but instead of using the crossbones, he has a torch and let's call it a sledgehammer. So for this sign build, what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. I'm not just going to trace the outline. I'm actually going to use an actual torch and an actual sledgehammer. Um, instead of using a sledgehammer, obviously being a metal sign, it's got some weight to it already and the sledgehammer is not light. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to fabricate the head of the sledgehammer out of 14 gauge mild steel, and I'm going to form it, and then we're going to attach it to this replacement handle that I purchased off Amazon, and then I will trim it down to fit the scale of the drawing. So the very first step is going to be cutting out this head on the plasma machine, getting it formed, that way I can get everything scaled and I can finish the main base plate of the design. So here's what I came up with on Fusion 360. They actually have a tool on there, a sheet metal tool where you can build a 3D model and then you can unfold it. I didn't do that. I just basically made the design. It was pretty easy uh, with the dimensions. So here's what I came up with. I made some um, circular relief cuts in all the corners so that it would be easier to break all of the folds. So let's jump on the plasma machine. We'll get this thing cut and start forming it and get it tacked together and then we can move on. Some of these pieces cut. I got the skull and the eye patch piece that got cut out here. I saved that, you'll see why later. And I got the helmet, which I cut separately. So here is the hammerhead. We're gonna go ahead and put the uh, Keika vice brake in the vise and see if we can get this thing formed up and make it look like a sledgehammer head. Shift sledgehammer head here all done and I got everything ground down nice and smooth and I think it turned out pretty nice so we'll go ahead and put the handle right in there now I'm gonna attach this thing later I'm not quite ready to do it yet but at least I can mock it up now so we got our torch our sledgehammer and we got the skull all cut out the only thing I have left is the base plate so in order to cut that base plate what I need to do is I'm gonna take pictures straight over the top of the torch and the sledgehammer so I could use them and insert them as a canvas into Fusion 360. That way I could finish the design on that base and get that cut so we could start assembling this thing. Okay, now that I got those pictures of the sledgehammer and the torch, I'm gonna to show you a little trick in Fusion 360 and I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what we're doing here in this project so you kind of have an idea of 
what we're doing as I fabricate this thing. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take that picture and we're going to insert it as a canvas. I'm gonna insert from the computer. Now you have to pick what plane you want it to be on. And now if you zoom way in, you can see it. So what we're gonna do, we're going to enter this in on the scale. We're gonna hit 20 just to get us close, just so it's big enough we can work with it. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick here to make the size of the canvas in Fusion 360 the exact same size as the actual piece that you took the picture of. All right, so here is the piece that we actually took the picture of, the sledgehammer head. So we're gonna go ahead and measure it. We're gonna find any reference point. It could be from top to bottom, side to side. Now this happens to land right on exactly seven inches from the point to the front of the head. So that is exactly seven inches. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into this canvas and under this sledgehammer, which is this canvas, we're gonna hit calibrate. And we're gonna pick this point here and this point here, and you can see right now it's only a little over four inches. We're gonna make it seven inches, and then you can see it got bigger. So now the canvas uh, is actual dimensions as the piece that you actually took the picture of. So the next step now, in order to plug this into our project, what we're gonna do is we're going to, this is the drawing that I'm working off of. This is uh, One Eye Customs logo, so you can see the sledgehammer behind it. So now we're going to go back to the sledgehammer, right click it, we're gonna edit the canvas. Now we basically can take this and we can rotate it right to where we want it and then we can click this button right here and we can move the canvas around. So I'm basically going to place it right where that hammer in his logo is and kind of mimic that part of the drawing. Once I get it right where I want it, um, then I can go ahead and hit okay I can get rid of the one eye customs and that hammer is placed exactly where I want it. So here I already have traced it. So basically I went around and I traced with the CAD tools around the sledgehammer, gave myself like a half inch gap all the way around it. And I did the same thing with the torch head, which you can see right here. And now I can cut this base plate out and the torch and the sledgehammer should fit perfectly inside those pieces that I cut into that main base plate. Okay, so let's load up some steel. We'll get that base plate cut. We can start fabbing this thing together, get it wrapped up. And in case you're wondering, you're gonna be seeing the Keystone Girl very soon. Put get back in there. Just a little heads up, I just bought uh, 14 gauge 4x8 sheets of steel and I uh, got these for $104 a piece so it looks like steel might be coming down. All right, so I got all the main pieces cut. I got my mess cleaned up, and all I got left to do is I'm gonna do some grinding and clean up all the dross on the back side of all these pieces, and then I'm gonna start assembling these pieces. So without getting into a bunch of detail, I'm gonna give you a brief idea of what exactly I'm gonna be doing and how I'm going to put all this together. So right here, I've got the lower part of the skull, and I've got the helmet for it. So this section right here 
is going to be on half inch standoffs so it's going to float off of this main base and then the helmet is going to be attached to three quarter inch standoffs which will give it another quarter of an inch higher than the skull so it should give it a kind of a nice effect then i'm going to be reusing the eye patch piece that got cut out of the skull i'm going to have this slightly elevated above the skull so after we use the canvas tool and we cut these sections out you can see that the torch fits perfectly in that with about a half of an inch gap all the way around it which when we put some lighting in there it'll shine through it should look really cool now we have the sledgehammer head which fits perfectly in the other cutout and then of course i'll attach the handle but i'm going to have to notch the handle so it can lay flat across the torch so hopefully you got a pretty good idea of what it is that i'm trying to accomplish here so i'm going to get to work start making all these little brackets get all this stuff attached so we can keep on moving on this thing before I start using power tools and welding, I like to have myself a cold one. It's probably not recommended, but a little technique that I use works really well for me. So let's get that Keystone girl out here. Bring me out a fresh Keystone, then we can get started. Whoa, never made that noise before. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how long have you been sitting in the Jeep for? Pretty much all morning. Why? Because you're driving me a little crazy. <laughs> uh, well, what do you think I come out here for? To do work. <laughs> no. I wish I would have known you were in there. I would have. Uh, I would have hopped in there with you. You know. Yeah. Test out the suspension. Because <laughs> it's a Jeep. Get your mind out of the gutter. Off-roading. All right. I'm going to give you guys two choices. You can either watch me do all the fabricating work or you can watch the Keystone Girl drink a beer while doing jumping jacks. <laughs> oh boy. All right, in three, two, one. Let's get that Keystone girl back over here so she can give me a hand. What, you need another beer? No, I just need a hand putting this together. Oh, okay. Can you have some time? Yeah. Okay. Can All right, can you grab me the sledgehammer, please? Heavy? No, I'm just strong. No, I know, because I built it from scratch. Does that impress you? It does. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's flip it over and see how it looks. Yeah. You gonna ask me a question? No. Alright, everything went together really nice. I'm really happy with the way everything fit. All that's left to do is disassemble it. I'm gonna go ahead and paint everything. Then I'm going to figure out how we're going to get this thing to Pennsylvania. All right, I got everything painted up for the one eye custom sign. All that's left is the final assembly. Then I'm going to pack this up and ship it out to Pennsylvania, which unfortunately can be very, very pricey. Let's just drive it there ourselves. I guess that's not a bad idea. Right? I guess we're going to Pennsylvania. We'll see you there.
so me and the family made the six hour drive all the way up to Pennsylvania to see Doug over at One Eye Customs. So Doug, it's nice to finally meet you. Thanks for having us. I'm glad you made it over. And uh, here is the finished product all put together. And uh, Doug, what do you think? I'm just blown away. I, I have never seen a sign anything like this. The craftsmanship, the work, the creativity, everything that you put into this thing, I'm just blown away. The, the three dimension of it, is phenomenal. I am more than honored to be able to to hang it up on my garage wall and you know being that this is uh, my logo for my channel it's, it's just it's huge for me to have something that's this nice so I really appreciate that. Well I'm, I'm glad you like it. All right Doug already put his finishing touches on the sign he put some LED lights behind it and he's got his back wall all set up and ready to mount it so the last thing we need to do is go ahead and get this thing mounted. <music> All right, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Another huge thanks to Doug at One-Eyed Customs and Adam over at Hometown Acres. This all kind of was started from Adam wanting to do a tribute uh, for all the help that Doug has done on his channel and all the work that he's done around Adam's property. And uh, I got to say, after meeting Doug, I'm thoroughly impressed with his abilities and his knowledge. So if you haven't seen his channel, I will have links. Make sure you check him out. Uh, he's got a ton of great information, uh, really cool projects around his property. He's got an amazing setup out here, and I'm glad I was able to get out here and take a look at it. So thanks again, Doug. I oh, appreciate it. You. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. You can do some hand, you know, just live in the moment. <laughs> F it. F it. <laughs> yes. It's spicy. I was angry. <laughs> that was like angry. I can't do this. Oh my god. Yeah. Two by sixes. You can dance on that if you want. I might later. All right, hop back in the Jeep. I'll meet you in there in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's only one rule. Don't let it pop out because they will ban us from YouTube. Okay. Okay. When we're done filming, then you can let that pop out. <laughs> one. What are you doing one hand for? What do you got? I was waiting for the beer. <laughs> you want to oh. get a broken arm or something? There's a lot to keep in place down there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't gonna be in it, I'm just too thirsty. <laughs> I'm just watching you the whole time right now. It feels weird drinking this, I haven't even eaten breakfast yet.